Hey guys, it's Tia, welcome to the video. Today I am gonna be walking you guys step by step through the entire Etsy listing creation process, uh, how I would create the optimized Etsy listing and you'll be just looking over my shoulder as I do this while I give you some useful tips for each of the sections. So we'll be covering you know, images, title, description, and tags, obviously, as well as some other bits you didn't think even mattered, like categories. Now, one type of product I sell is fonts. So this will be a listing for a font I've made, but whatever you're selling, whether it's digital products or t-shirts, the principles are the same. And we're just trying to list something that actually sells. Now this font is called California. Um, I created the artwork for this font on my iPad and then I exported it through Illustrator with the font self extension and now I'm trying to sell it on Etsy. So for fonts specifically, uh, I would ideally sell them in a pack and not individually, but I'm not making 10 different fonts for this video. If you sign up to an Etsy shop with my link below, you can get 40 free Etsy listings. And if you find this video helpful, make sure you like, subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. So the first thing you'll have to upload is images and you have 10 images in your upload slot. Now, sometimes I don't use all of them because I'm lazy, but ideally I would have all the images filled in and so should you. Now for Etsy, the aspect ratio is four to three. So they recommend 2,700 pixels wide by 2025 pixels tall. So customers can sort of zoom in comfortably. And for brand awareness, you wanna put your shop logo around some of the images. Um, you want one image that's just text, I think, and one that includes a shop promotion. So some kind of discount or displaying the other products in your shop. So even if the customer doesn't want this listing, they'll be reminded that you have an entire shop with more listings and then they might go check it out and buy something else. Now, design wise, you want a relatively consistent color scheme. So it looks sort of professional and it's something that stands out among the competition. Um, and you can put some promotions as well to make it stand out. And especially the first listing, because that is the cover image. So that's what people will see when they're scrolling through the marketplace. Now, Etsy customers in general tend to prefer like softer colors, I found, not like really harsh and bright colors. So this is my best attempt at that. Now I'm using Photoshop, but if you don't have it, there's this free online tool. It's called photop.com, which is basically free Photoshop. So it's very high quality, free design tool. And you can make designs that look just like the ones I made just now using this tool. Now the background images for these, so the sunset and these random women, I got these from Pixabay. So pixabay.com gives you copyright free images that you can use for commercial purposes. Now the reason the designs are so sort of feminine looking is because around 70% of Etsy customers are women. So I'm really keeping that in mind and designing for the target audience. And you should have an idea of who your target market is too. Now these images are mock-ups, which are really important for digital and physical products, especially if you're selling things like print on demand. If you're selling a handmade product, then you'll want to take high quality real life photos of the product in use. And if you're selling digital like me, then you want to show all of the features as well. Um, of how the product can be used. Now the key to converting a customer to buy is really to show and not tell. Nobody really reads the description, so you need to show how the product will be used um, so the potential customer can sort of imagine themselves using it. So I made these using Placeit where you can upload a design and then they'll realistically sort of put the image onto a real life scenario for you. The images are really high quality. They do have a few free mockups, but if you want to access all of them, then you can use my link down below to sign up for a premium account. Now, full disclosure, I do get affiliate commissions from every purchase using that link, but I really think Placeit is an amazing tool for sellers. So here's another one. They have all sorts of things like mugs, shirts, business cards, hoodies. So we've uploaded these images. Um, now let's move on to the video. So Etsy says videos help increase conversions. Again, I'm lazy, so I don't upload a video for every listing, but ideally you should. The video has no sound. It's five to 15 seconds long and they want it to be 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels and also 1080p at least. So you can film your own video, which will probably take ages, um, but I found the easiest way to make a video for free is using Canva. So it's basically a slideshow you can animate and then download it as an MP4 really quickly and upload that straight to Etsy. So this is mine.
So yeah, it's just going through some images and then um, your promotion as well. Now Canva is a great tool for designers that offers a lot of free features. If you want access to more features like their own animations that you can use for your Etsy videos, then you can use my link down below to sign up for Canva Pro. Again, it is an affiliate link, but the free version does let you make videos. Okay, so now let's move on to SEO, starting with the title, which is the most heavily weighted part of the SEO. Now SEO stands for search engine optimization, and it just means putting keywords in the text fields of your list that people are actually searching for. So buyers looking for products like yours can actually find them. Now this trips a lot of beginner sellers up because for example, my font is called California. So I could put you know, California as the title. But if you think about it realistically, no one looking for fonts is typing in the word California, right? They're typing in things like fonts. So how do we know which exact keywords customers are searching for? I use an Etsy research tool called Sales Samurai that helps me find low competition, high demand keywords. I just type my main keyword here, for example, font, and then it spits out a list of uh, keywords and their stats. So if I click on more, it shows some long tail keywords their search volume, competition. And these are words that people actually search for that are related to your product in the uh, Chrome extension. You can also search in the tool itself. So this will also give you some uh, keywords that you can use. If you sign up using my link below to Sales Samurai and use a code tier 20, you can get 20% off for life. It is an affiliate link. <laughs> Um, so many affiliate links in this video, but I do think this is a great tool. I use it all the time. I've done a very in-depth video on the specifics of Etsy SEO before, and I recommended a template for that, but I like to test different titles. So realistically, I won't stick to that template all the time. What I do is I look through Sales Samurai, note down a list of keywords that have fewer results and higher search volume, and then string them together in a list. So trying to put the highest demand and lowest competition keywords towards the front of the title. So here's the title I made for this listing, which contains the keywords that I've researched in the sort of fonts niche. About this listing, you're just gonna put I did, and then what is it, a finished product, when did you make it, um, recently. Now for the category, you wanna pick a relevant one, but sometimes there are multiple that are relevant to your product. And in that case, I think it makes sense that you pick the category with the longest list of things leading up to it because your listing will be indexed on more sections, right? So for this one, I would pick store graphics or logos and branding. Um, but to be honest, I do find a lot of my customers are sort of Crycut users. So sometimes I do pick cutting machine files. I sort of alternate between the two categories. But in general, I think the more categories leading up to the category that you see. Now for the rest of these, just pick the relevant options if they apply. If not, then just put something there anyway, because um, maybe the closest one that's relevant, because again, it helps index the listing in more places. Now for renewal options, I usually set automatic renewal because even if a listing doesn't sell, it doesn't expire. So it's just still out there and it basically acts like a mini advertisement for my shop, but it's really up to you. Now um, product type, mine is going to be digital. Now for the description, you may have heard it doesn't matter for SEO, but Etsy recently announced that it now does matter. So I found that having words that are in all three fields, so the title, description, and tags does help your listing rank higher. So just keep that in mind. But the effect on SEO of the description is still, I think, minimal compared to the title and tag. So it's really just a place to specify important information about your product for the customer. In my case, it's how to download, uh, you know, what's included in the files and the digital licensing. If you're selling a physical product, you want to include information like shipping, delivery times, um, maybe product weight and exactly what they'll receive. So here's one I made earlier. It's a pre-made description for the product. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And the description does help index your listing on Google as well. Now for production partners, if you're using one, then connect it and tick it. If not, then just leave it. I already connected Printful to this one. And for the section, this is just a section for your shop, right? So I'm gonna pick fonts. Now tags are another important part of SEO. And to help the listing rank higher, I found having the same keywords in your title as your tags helps. Now, again, we want the relevant high demand, low competition keywords. And I have a list of these that I keep on a document, but here's an example. So sharing keywords with the title and the description plus a few more things that people might search for. Um, and make sure you fill out all 13 tags. 
you know, as I said, I'm lazy sometimes and I skimp on images and videos, but never tags. Always have all 13 because this is how customers find you, right? Now materials, you can put in some if that applies. Now the price will be unique to your product type. And if you have Sales Samurai, you can actually gauge the general price spread in the marketplace for your keyword. So I would suggest going on the lower end of that if you don't have many sales yet and over time as you sell more you'll get a better idea of the optimal price now for quantity if you have a limited number then put that but for print on demand and digital products it will usually be um, 999 which is the maximum and then for SKU uh, don't really I don't really worry about this it's just if you want to track your inventory that way personalization this is not a personalized product but if you are selling one then you can turn this on digital files to so make sure you upload any digital files if you have any check all of them are there and accurate obviously um, i've only got two and i'm missing the pdf but i really can't be asked to find it so yeah basically we're done now um, after you upload remember to add your discount and free shipping as well if you're selling a physical product those things do help your listing stand out and rank higher now for each product you only need to do this entire process once and then you can copy listing function and edit each subsequent one right so hopefully this demonstration was helpful. If uh, you have any questions or you would do anything differently, any suggestions, then let me know. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.